Alright, welcome back to my Alien vs Predator Nightmare Difficulty Guided Walkthrough for the Marine Campaign. We are on mission 4 and here we encounter a substantial spike in difficulty. Consider the first half of the campaign as training for the second half, because from now on there is no room to fuck around anymore. This mission is really long and really intense. Consisting of several major fights against an onslaught of enemies, including a boss fight against a predator. And a single mistake could set you all the way back to the start. Now for the first section I choose to run all the way up to the door and get the hacking started before I engage the aliens in this area. Well, unless they happen to run in front of my gun of course. So it should be obvious that if they allow you the chance to easily take them out on your way to the door, that you should use that opportunity. But the point is that fighting them near the door is a lot more manageable, as it at least restricts their movement somewhat. Although your movement is restricted as well, the two pillars and the stairs do give you some leeway at least. Of course, as you know by now, RNG plays a role in how the enemies behave, but it is very likely that as soon as you started the hacking process, one or two aliens will immediately start spitting acid from the rock formation on the right side if you turn around. After that, most likely one or two aliens will come from the rock formation on the left and then the final ones will approach you from the stairs. Although, as you will see, in my case it is the final one that comes from the left side. Also keep in mind that because you have limited space to move around, wounded and crawling aliens can easily still be a threat. So unless you go down the stairs or use the pillars as cover, it is not really advisable to let them bleed out. And if you take lasting damage, you can find a healing item at the bottom of the stairs. Alright, now we have essentially a sniper battle against several androids on two floors. Remember that androids are really dangerous, because depending on what weapon they are holding, they can either kill you in one or two hits, in case of a sniper rifle or shotgun, or if they use a pulse rifle, then a single bullet will not do much damage, but a whole salvo will drain your health bar in about a second. The good thing about using the sniper rifle against them is that the scope allows you to see them through walls, at least as long as you have spotted them before. Now unfortunately I don't do this consistently and their positioning doesn't always allow for it, but removing both of their legs is a guaranteed kill, whereas they can still function without a hat. Rather counterintuitive, but if you can, you should always go for the legs. Even removing one, although it will not kill them, it will at least immobilize them, making them an easier target in most cases. Or the next best thing is to go for the arms. It all depends on whether they are behind cover and to what extent. By the way, before I go up the stairs here, I first destroy the explosive canister. Not merely to damage the nearby android, but mostly so that it cannot be used against me, mostly. Now, the weird thing is that after androids are killed, their corpses can emit a sort of electrical explosion. And although technically it hurts you, it hardly does any damage, so I can't say I really worry about it that much. And of course, don't get fooled by androids lying on the ground. They are most likely not actually dead.
Alright, make sure that you are fully healed and have replenished your healing items, because now things are getting really tough. Now we have to face an entire freaking army of xenomorphs. However, there is a little trick to it. Don't pick up the smart gun yet, because you cannot run while carrying it. And that's exactly what you will want to do, because if you trigger the next waypoint, that will significantly shorten the fight. Unfortunately, I mess up and I turn around too quickly. It's safest to run all the way to the door and then turn around. Well, at least as far as triggering the next waypoint is concerned. Because it's anything but a safe strategy in general. Because you need to avoid several aliens on your way to the door and then you are cornered when you're trying to get back to the smart gun. Moreover, as soon as you pick it up, the entire area around it will already be filled with enemies. So it's not unlikely that you will get killed before you even get ready to fight. However, if you manage to do it, it will give you a significant benefit. Now, when it comes to using the smart gun, especially if your aiming skills are as poor as mine, the automatic aiming is exactly what you need here. However, there are also some downsides to it. And the primary one is the fact that, just like the shotgun, the smart gun causes really excessive asset explosions. And that is in fact a major downside in this fight. Because as soon as an alien gets too close and you kill it, the resulting acid explosion can literally drain your entire life bar. I have failed this mission multiple times in this area for that exact reason. When firing, make sure to fire in short bursts, otherwise you will waste too much ammo. And even though it looks like you have a lot, you will go through it much faster than you may think. And if you run out of ammo, you don't have a backup weapon other than your pistol, because it takes up two weapon slots rather than one. And there aren't exactly many places in this mission where you can refill your ammo. For this weapon at least. Don't relax just yet. Waste it! Okay, so at this point I tried to end this section by going through the door. But remember that I turned back too early before? So I really screwed myself over here, because now the door is still closed. So the end result was that I almost got killed because I got cornered. And then I had to go all the way back and keep on killing aliens. And then later on I had to try again. So let me emphasize again, it is not required to take out every single alien that enters this area. As long as you get to the locked door first, and I mean all the way, then it will open up much earlier, which makes it much more likely that you will survive this section.
go find the killer. Alright, before we have the boss fight against the predator, there's another panel that needs to be hacked. So again, you are better off if you first run all the way to the door to get the hacking started, even though it's not literally based on the timer, but the only fight that matters is the one that starts after you initiate the hacking sequence. So only focus on taking out xenomorphs that are blocking your path. And as soon as you get the hacking started, get away from that panel and start running around the area to prevent the enemies from ganging up on you or cornering you. It's a bit like the nightclub section in mission 1 again, but this time you have a little more freedom to not constantly run backwards when fighting off the aliens. Also, don't bother with the smart gun here. It will slow you down and you will simply run out of ammo anyway. It's a great weapon, but just forget about it for the rest of the mission. Okay, make sure to pick up ammo and healing items and then it's time for an actual boss fight. The fight against the predator is really tense, but it is in principle not actually all that difficult. It's far more about being patient and just taking things slow. As long as you keep moving, it's not actually that hard to avoid the plasma cannon. Although you do need to be aware of both splash damage and the fact that there are explosive canisters throughout the area. So as usual, you need to be aware of your surroundings. But the only time you are truly in danger is when the predator jumps down and tries to get into melee range. Unless you are really lucky, he will kill you instantly when he gets too close. The other annoying factor of course is that he can heal himself, or better said he has something like a shield that you need to destroy before you can do actual damage to him. 
The red bar is his health and the blue bar is his shield. So that means that the blue bar has to be completely depleted before you can do damage to the red bar. The benefit of the sniper rifle is that the scope helps you to spot him when he is invisible. But when he jumps down and gets up close, you might want to switch to the shotgun and use double shots with L2 for maximum damage. It can also stun him for a second if he is still alive at that point. Although I tend to panic a bit too much to even switch weapons in the first place. But as you will see, switching to the shotgun actually saved my life at some point. Okay, so after a grueling fight, you would think that the mission would end, but no, there are two more fights ahead of us. And just as a reminder, if you die at this point, you have to start all over from the beginning again. So the cool thing about the next section is that you have the xenomorphs hiding inside the walls, just like when the marines first encounter them in the aliens movie. In fact, you can even get all the way to where your partner is without getting attacked. But then you have basically locked yourself into a corner when they do start their attack. 
So that's not a good strategy. So instead, take it slow and pay close attention to the walls. And try to take out all the aliens before you even get to your partner. This is another example of where the scope of the sniper rifle is a great benefit. Just in time to put a bullet in my head. No, wait. Private, if you can get the corporal to me, I might be able to remove the parasite. Who's that? One of the colonists? I am an ally. I can help. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Alright, the final fight of this mission, and then you are free to wipe the sweat from your butt crack. Your partner is the one who has to open the door, and she is just strolling around like it's a sunny Sunday afternoon. So, you can regard this section as being on a timer. However, there is not much to say as you will be fighting off waves of xenomorphs again, like you did so many times before. However, keep in mind that because of how this area is constructed, the aliens have incredible freedom to move around. They can literally attack you from any side. Those platforms are obstacles to you, but not to the aliens. So always keep moving and try to keep it cool, as you will probably be tense as fuck. Because it's the end of the mission and you really, really don't want to die at this point. Especially not by accidentally shooting the explosive canisters. So don't do that. And that's the end of the mission. Fucking hell, that was some intense fucking shit. So go and dry your butt crack, but before you do, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and stay tuned for the next episode.